my humble prayers and salutations at the lotus feet of Bhagawan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Okay, some of you already know that uh, I was lucky enough to be born into a Sai family. You know, you've known my dad, my mom. And uh, when, you know, um, I was uh, uh, in my childhood when I was five years old, that is one of my first uh, vivid dreams that I remember of Swami, okay? So I was sleeping in my room, I was five years old. And, um, uh, you know, and there was this um, a maid who used to sleep in my room with me. And she got up in the middle of the night and she, uh, she saw this uh, shadow sitting next to me. So, um, and uh, she got scared and she went back to sleep. And next day she woke up and she told my dad, oh, uh, you know, Saab, I saw the shadow sitting next to, uh, to this, uh, you know, to, uh, to Gublu, that's my pet name. Um, and I got really scared. So just want to let you know. So when I woke up and I said, Papa, Swami came in my dream. So he was actually sitting next to me and he was caressing my hair. So that was my first vivid dream of Swami at age of five. And you know, some of you that have been singing also from the age of five with adults, actually. I was very lucky to be, you know, I never questioned um, if Swami is God or not, because from the time I was born, thank you, Swami, for that, that in our temple, there was Shiva, there was Krishna, and there was Sai. So we, I did not have to question my dad, oh, is he God, you know, what does he do and things like that. My dad said, mom said, he's God, pray. I just prayed. So that was our prayer, you know, for, uh, we didn't question that if he was God or not. So we did not have to go through that. So uh, that was my first experience. And today, actually, I want to take you all the way out and I want to share some of my college Anandpur stories, how I got admission, how you took care of me, you know, what he taught me over there, just a few of the experiences I want to share. So the first one uh, I shared when I was five years old is that when a child is that young, that's all they need from God. They all they need is affection and love. And that's what I got, plenty of it after that. As a student, I got a lot of help. And then of course, um, you know, when I was in 12th grade, um, you know, Swami came in my dream and he said, Anandpurata um, Siddheta, uh, because I was really praying that I don't want to stay in Delhi, Swami, please call me, call me in your, uh, give me admission in your college. And when he came in my dream and he said, Anandpurata Siddheta, I was so happy uh, that, you know, he selected me um, to be part of his student, you know, as being the size student. So, um, uh, you know, I told my parents, we did our party, uh, you know, tickets, and we were ready for the entrance exam and everything. So we were in the train. And my mom said, oh, do you have your I card and do you have your forms and everything ready? Make sure you have everything in your backpack. And I checked everything and nothing was there. I had forgotten everything back. In Delhi. So, you know, um, <laughs> clumsy me. So, um, you know, so of course, then there was stress and there was a lot of crying and uh, scolding. <laughs> but I kept on praying. And in the middle of the night in the running train, my dad and I woke up at the same time and asked Papa, what happened? He asked me what happened. He said, well, Swami came in my dream and gave us a help, both of us at the same time. So at that time, we all knew that he's going to take care of this problem. Because back then, when I was in the college, they were very strict about the I card, you know, forms and documents and stuff, which I conveniently forgot being clumsy. But because he promised me as a mom, you know, he took care of me. So I got my seat, I got, you know, entrance and I cleared my, this thing, I got selected and everything. So I went and then uh, first day of summer course, that's when it started with our batch. We were so lucky to have summer course. So before, you know, previous batches, they didn't have summer course. It started 1991. And I was eating in the dining hall when there was this hustle bustle. We were like, what's going on? We're not used to, right? We're not used to that. So uh, we just folded our hands. I said, Swami's here. So we're looking for the orange row. Where is he? Where is he? So suddenly, you know, he just, he just comes right straight up to me. Okay. He stands straight up to me and he looks down at me and says, Dal puri achha hai. Khao khao. Cook khao. I was so happy. I was like in seventh heaven. And since then, I've been maintaining the tradition of cow, cow, cook, cow. That's been going on for sure. <laughs> you can look at me, that one word, I've, I've absolutely maintained of cow, cow, cook, cow. But for the longest time, you would not believe, you know, I, I have this diary. I want to quickly finish my, some of my experiences. This is my um, summer course diary that I used to maintain. And, you know, Swami's voice, sometimes when he's talking to you, is so light. And for the longest time, I thought it was Lal Puri. And I put Lal Puri, achha hai, kukka, kukka. 
So my husband, he said, there is nothing called lal puri. I'm sure he must have said dal puri. I said, no, you know, and it's so true. It must have been dal puri. And I had to correct myself. And I'm so thankful to my dad that, you know, some of the dreams that I had forgotten, the train dream, completely forgotten that he reminded me. The childhood dream when I was five years old, completely forgotten that he reminded me. I'm so happy for that, for my dad. And then my husband corrected me. So all these facts that are coming is because of him. You know, he corrected me at the right moment so that I don't share, share anything, you know, uh, the, the wrong facts. So, um, okay, so this is how I got my vision. So I made a lot of blunders along the way, but as a mother, he blessed me because he had promised me. So that's another dream. So the next one, um, I want to share, of course, Anandpur again. Uh, you know, summer vacations, we used to go back and forth. Uh, Delhi, sometimes Bangalore, Delhi, sometimes Anandpur. I'd meet a lot of different kinds of people and strike different conversations with them. So, um, and some, sometimes, no, most often the conversations will be about God and then go towards Swami. And then if they were negative, I would just get angry, argue with them, you know, like, oh, they're wrong. Their thought process is wrong and I'm right. And, you know, get into arguments. And, and I did that without realizing for a long time, I guess, you know, I kept on doing it. So one day I was sleeping, um, I was in Anandpur and, uh, you know, sleeping and Swami came in my dream and he said, he was very angry. He was very angry and he scolded me and he said, do not argue. He said, do not argue. Uh, people, if the people want to roll in the mud like pigs, let them roll. These were his words. That is not your job to lift them up. So that's when I understood something. It was a lesson taught for me, a teaching moment for me, that I have to respect everyone's thought process. Just because they don't see Swami as God, they might see, you know, Shiva or Krishna or Jesus Christ, somebody else as God. So I have to respect that thought process that, you know what, this is not my job to teach them. It is Swami's job to bring them close to them. That is not my job. My job is to just believe in Swami and do my duty. If they like you, they will follow you. If they don't like you, they will not follow you. But that is not up to us. That pressure is not on us. That is up to Swami to change them. We just have to pray. So this was a teaching moment for me that I had to shush <laughs> and keep my thought process and respect everybody else's. Okay. So the last one I will share very quickly today is when I was in the final year, uh, in, uh, you know, I was homesick after three years with all the South Indian food and everything that was along the way. I was homesick after final, you know, after my graduation, uh, no, before my graduation. So I, I wanted to go home. That's when Swami came in my dream and he said, Master's Karta. <laughs> and I started crying. I said, no, Swami, I want to go home. I don't want to stay home. I did. Being disobedient and disrespectful. You know, I was like crying. I said, I don't want to stay. I want to go home. Do whatever you want, please, please. So, and, you know, I just went home <laughs> and I told my parents and I got admission in Delhi University. I started my master's. But I was praying as a Swami, I don't want to see my I don't see myself as a teacher. I don't want to do master's PhD and get a become a you know college lecturer or something like that. Please help me. I want to get married. Get me married. Get me married. And you know he's so gracious. He will listen to any of the prayers that you make very honestly. So he will listen to you. And he did. And some of you were part of that. So that's another episode altogether. But anyways, he got me married and I conveniently forgot to finish my master's. So I just gave it up and I was happy. And then when I came to US, after several years, I wanted to work because Ishan was little when I came with him. So I wanted to work. Um, I got my degree out and I sent it for evaluation. And it was about three years equivalent, not four, that the US degrees, graduate degrees need. And that's when I knew why he insisted that I should do my master's. And of course, you have to face the consequences when you don't listen. And I did. And I did. But you know what? I just want to tell you that good or bad, you know, we all have those moments. But um, whatever it is, uh, you know, he's always with us. We just have to believe. We have to continue to pray that he's with us. So today's talk, I just want to end by thanking him, you know, for being part of my life, for touching me in every part of my area, for helping me, for protecting me, for guiding me, okay? Um, towards my own spiritual journey, okay? And these experiences are nothing, but they just bring you one step closer to Swami. Nothing but one step closer to Swami. So I just want to say that we just want to become your strong, spiritual, high soldiers. 
So I just want to let you know that we are all in the right track because I just had a dream and it was very happy. And this is the very first time I've shared my experiences actually with anyone. I, I just believe, I, I talk, talked to Archana and a couple of my friends a couple of weeks ago and I said, these experiences are so personal to me and therefore my own teaching, my own growth. How can they help someone else? But you know what? Shidi Sai Sat Charita is all about experiences and I had to learn from you guys that yes, I need to open up and talk about Swami. That is it. Swami. <laughs>